Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Puccini's Manolesco, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Donald Runnicles. The production was done by Gilbert de Flo. The set design and costumes were done by William Orlandi. The assistant director was Gerlinda Perkowski, and the chorus master was William Spaulding. Now this marks the second overall production that I've seen of Manolesco, as in I've seen this live on stage and not really live streamed as in the Metropolitan Opera's case. And as I said before, this was the opera that put Puccini on the map way before La Boheme, way before Tosca, and way before Madama Butterfly. And it has very famous numbers like Manon's two arias, In Quelle Trine Morbide, and Sola Perduta Abandonata, and De Grieux's Travoi Belle, and Donna Non Mi Vidi Mai. Now that it's out of the way, let's get on to what I thought about the production. Now, it does keep with the spirit of where Manon Lescaut was set, being the 1700s France. However, what really kills the production for me was the lack of scenery, because everything was like all white, and it kind of felt rather... Meh for me. It didn't really grow on me. And I kind of wish that there could have been a lot more scenery, but on the flip side, I could totally understand why it had to be this way with all the walls being white, save for just a couple of doors and no windows. I think it's just to really get the message of how restricted, how sheltered, and how closed society really was during the times of the French Revolution and even the times of the 1800s France in terms of the aristocrats and their rigid rules and how they have to live, how they have to conform to society, and how they have to make sure that they always are the best impression ever. It's just that I think it's trying to get the message of trying to show that this is a conformed society in which the aristocrats have to really behave a certain way, have to really, really live a certain way, and just really have to, well, live life in general in a certain way. But I will say that it got slightly better in the third act, though not that much. I mean, we still have, like, one piece of a prop, which is in the form of a boat, which is used to take in Manon, de Grieux, and the other prostitutes for deportation. And then in the fourth scene, where it was supposed to take place in a desert, it was, well, still with the same white walls all around, save for a few red rocks, or huge red rocks on the floor. So... I really have to say that the production didn't really grow on me, though I do understand why it had to kind of go in this direction, in my opinion. But I really have to say that the costumes were really elegant. Don't get me wrong. They really do speak to where Manon was set and where and when this entire story was set. So I really have to say that the costumes were very much colorful and very much lively to look at. So overall, I may not be a huge fan of the production, mostly due to the lack of great scenery, but the costumes really more than compensate in terms of really enjoying the production, in terms of just seeing a lot of really wonderful costumes, from the aristocrats, to the prostitutes, to the soldiers, and even to a lot of Manon's costumes, in which she should be able to look re really, really gorgeous on every costume that she wears. And I'll really get to Martina Serafin much later in this review. So as I said before, the production may not grow on me, but the costumes really did their best to really salvage the overall production. And now let's get on to the singers. Singing the title role of Manon Lescaut was a veteran singer I have been listening to for quite some time, and I've been really, really want, wanting to listen to her ever since I was quite young. And now that I got the chance, I was just totally blown away. 
I'm, of course, referring to Martina Zerafin. Now, I have looked up to her ever since I first heard a couple of clips on her on YouTube, singing one of the arias from uh, Zigeuner Liebe, So elend und so treu, and even a clip of her singing the Inquesta Regia from Turandot. And I thought to myself, wow, this is a spinto soprano that I really, really love. And this is quite an example of what I think is an ideal spinto soprano voice. First of all, she has that really lovely, creamy, rich texture that really is so homogenous throughout all the registers from the low notes to the middle notes, all the way up to the high notes. And she uses her technique very, very well. She is an excellent singer and an equally excellent actress. I totally bought it with her as Manon. Because it's no surprise, she has been on the stage for many, many years, and this is definitely reflected on the experience that she has. So she was totally in her A game throughout the evening. However, there was an announcement made before the opera started that back in December during a performance of Tosca in the same opera house, she unfortunately injured her leg after jumping off the parapet, which kind of left her in a little, little bit of a really sticky situation, but... The gentleman said, no worries, she got better and she's still continuing to get better. So just really hope the best for her performance. And I really have to say that she was able to really, really summon up all the courage and really give out such a fine performance despite the fact that she injured herself like three or four months ago. So I'm actually really impressed with Martina Zerafin, not just for her performance in the title character, but her overall commitment to her art, and just the way she was able to embody Manon with such a wonderful, homogenous, spinto soprano voice that she is extremely well known for, and her overall theatricality, her overall taste and savor for the text, and for her character, she really understood her from beginning to end. And she looked lovely all throughout. I really loved how she looked. She really looked like a kept woman from the first to the second act. And then you see part of that kept womanly nature fade away, but she still maintains her grace and maintains her overall beauty until the final act in which she sees herself as no longer fabulous, but she still has that inner fabulousness in her that really makes her addicting to watch. And her rendition of Sola Perduta Abandonata was so heartfelt. And she died with such beauty. So overall, I was totally blessed to see this really wonderful veteran singer dominate the stage in this role. She owned Manon. She was Manon. And I totally bought her in this role. Singing the role of her lover, Le, Com uh, excuse me, Le Chevalier Renato de Grieux, was the Italian tenor Massimo Giordano. Now, I've heard a lot about this guy ever since I was a teenager, and I was quite interested with him because, from what I could tell, he seems to specialize in a lot of the full lyric and spinto tenor repertoire, usually from the likes of composers like, like Donizetti, Verdi, and even to a lot of the Verissimo operas. And just by seeing him on stage... I was totally enthralled with his voice. Granted, he kind of got himself into a lukewarm start in the first act, but he picked himself up really well throughout the later parts of the opera. There were times I kind of noticed that his acting from the first to the second act wasn't really too involving for me, but 
I think the reason why it was mostly because he was trying to save that energy for the fourth and final act in which you really need to be able to really be immersed in the situation. And in the fourth act, I totally bought his despair. I totally bought his his overall need to have Manon alive and well. I really bought all of it in the fourth act. I think the reason why he didn't act as involved in like the first to the second act was I think he was trying to really portray Renato de Grieu as a gentleman who feels rather indifferent to the whole aristocratic lifestyle. He feels like it's kind of boring for him and he just wants a life full of vivacity, enthusiasm, art, women, and he just wants to pretty much travel around town and even around the world. So I could kind of tell that maybe he was just trying to play up the boredom that he has in this character. Hence, that's why he kind of got into such a lukewarm start in terms of his singing and his acting. But overall, I really do love the quality of his voice. First of all, it has this very fine centurion sound in which he uses to such a great advantage. Secondly, he is an expert in terms of singing in the Italian style. He's got what a lot of people will call the squillo, in which he's able to have that homogeneousness in the low, middle, and even the high notes. And his high notes were clarion. Not a single sign of cracking, not a single sign of, of like, rusting. It stayed really brilliant, really charismatic, and I totally bought it. Yes, there were some times that I kind of noticed that he kind of does the whole hiccup um, lines in terms of his singing. There are times that he does it, I think it was just his way of trying to pick up the pace in terms of the lines that he's singing because, as I realized, the role of Renato de Grieu is definitely one of the toughest tenor roles or... More specifically, one of the toughest spinto roles for any tenor. So the fact that he was able to really pull it all together and really put out such a fine performance, despite a lukewarm start, in my opinion, was definitely a testament to his brilliance. And singing the role of Le Sergent uh, Le Skull was a singer who was definitely a huge surprise for me when he sang this role the one and only Noel Boley, because usually I would usually expect a cavalier baritone or a lyric baritone to really sing this part. And with Noel Boley, his voice, well, it kind of straddles along the bass baritone and dramatic baritone fach. So to really hear him in this role was quite exciting. Then again, I think it is kind of standard to have a really strong and really fine-tuned voice to sing such a thankless baritone character. And I thought that Noel Boli did a fabulous job singing the role of Manon's brother, Le School. As always, he has this very fine, rich, robust timbre to his voice, and his stage presence was elegant, commanding, and I totally bought him as a big brother to Manon. He was really in his element when he sang this role, and I could seriously hope the best for his future singing a lot more dramatic baritone roles, because he really has a great amount of potential to really sing more dramatic roles. You could really tell from the timbre to his voice, to his overall mannerisms, and even to the theatricality that he has on stage, and even the stage presence. It's a grand stage presence, which I really bought from beginning to end, and he was able to make the best out of this extremely thankless baritone character. Singing the role of Geronte de Ravois was Stephen Bronck, yet another veteran at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. As always, he has a very fine, robust, 
rich voice, and his stage presence was equally as commanding. He was able to make the best out of this really thankless character. And he had the voice, the manner, and the acting talent to really pull off this wonderful yet extremely ungratifying character role. Singing the role of Edmondo was yet another singer who was a mainstay at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, and that is, of course, Gideon Poppe, in which I've been seeing a lot of him from the first time I've watched him. Well, what more can you expect from Monsieur Poppe? He has a very fine lyric tenor voice that he was able to use a great deal of advantage for, and his stage presence was charming, brilliant, and charismatic. And even though Edmondo only appears in the first act, he really brings out this charisma, this boyishness, and this overall vivacity, which really makes Edmondo come alive. He was totally in his element in this role, and I definitely enjoyed his portrayal. Then we have the role of the Madrigalist, sung by Annika Schlicht. And in her little song, I thought she sang really gorgeously with such a homogenous tone. And she is helped by a few members of the Deutsche Oper Berlin Chorus, namely Heidrun Hessner, Nicole Dreyes, Gabriele Goebbels, and Saskia Klump. I thought their voices really blended well together. Then we have the role of the dancing master, sung by Burkhard Ulrich. This is the second time I've seen him this weekend. Basically, I've seen him many times in the Deutsche Oper, no surprise at all. And he still manages to make a great deal of charisma and a great deal of life for this really thankless character role. Thanks to such a very fine voice and an equally fine and commanding and charismatic stage presence to boot. Then we have The Sergeant, sung by Derek Walton, The Lamplighter, sung by Paul Kaufman, and The Ship Captain, sung by Michael Adams, and even The, the Innkeeper, sung by Thomas Lehman. I thought these gentlemen were able to give out such fine performances in these really, really, really small roles but their impression on these roles helped more than anything as they did a very fine job. So overall, I am very impressed with the quality of the singing. Yes, there may have been some shortcomings here and there, but they can all be forgiven because I still managed to get a great deal of top-tier singing from the likes of Martina Zarafin, Massimo Giordano, Noel Boli, Stephen Bronk, and many, 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 many other singers throughout this opera. I could really tell that they have worked their asses off from beginning to end, and the result was fabulous. Then we have the conducting done by Donald Runnicles. What more can I expect from the guy? He really knows how to handle the text really well, and he was able to conduct everything very well from top to bottom, or from bottom to top. So overall, I am more than impressed with the overall quality of the singing and conducting and even the fine chorus singing from the Deutsche Oper Berlin's chorus as to be expected. I may not be too crazy about the production, but hey, those are my opinions. Well, that's all for now. I'd also like to hear what you also thought about this particular production of Manon Skull. Did you like the production? Did you really love it? Were you kind of indifferent about it? Or did you absolutely loathe it? And what about your opinions of the singers? Did you love all the singers? Was there a singer that stood out for you? Was there a singer that you felt was sort of like the weak spot? Please let me know in the comments below. So until then, I wish you all a good night. And I'm very excited for my trip to Budapest. And I'll be leaving on the 19th and coming back to Berlin on the 3rd of April. So I am really, really excited for this trip because I'm going to be spending Easter there. So 
do expect a lot of opera reviews while I'm there. Okay, y'all. Good night.